Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. For today's video, I wanted to kick off a new series on my channel where I share my top five favorite products from a brand alongside my least five favorite products from that same brand. And how I'm thinking about this is that the five favorite products that I choose are not only going to be products that I personally really enjoy, but that also just have something special about them. Maybe the formula is elevated and really amazing. Maybe there's a set of ingredients in them that is great that you can't necessarily find easily elsewhere. Maybe the type of product that it is is kind of difficult to find and unique. Something about each of these products is going to be really, really special and amazing, and that is why they have made the top five. The bottom five, that's more just going to be my opinion, things that I'm not super impressed with that I could definitely do without that I think I have found better options for. And I thought, what better brand to kick off this series with than CeraVe? I definitely would like to expand this series into hair care, maybe makeup, whatever you guys would like to see, so not just the thinking for skincare, but CeraVe is really the brand that kind of kickstarted my channel for me. I used to just sit down when I started YouTube a couple years ago, have no idea what I was doing, which is evident if you go back and look at those videos, which honestly, please don't like spare me, it embarrasses me, but I would just sit down and review products ingredient by ingredient. And most of the products that I reviewed were CeraVe products. So I thought we could bring it back, talk about the best of CeraVe and the worst of CeraVe. And if you guys enjoy this, of course, we'll expand to other brands as well. But before we jump into all of that, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and drop a comment below letting me know your number one favorite and number one least favorite product from CeraVe. Thank you so much for doing all of those things. It really helps to support me with YouTube algorithms, so I appreciate you so, so much. And if you need anything from me at all, it's always listed in my description box below, including Lightroom preset filters for editing your Instagram photos, my SPF merch, discount codes, timestamps, and links to all of the products that I will be talking about, along with links to my favorite skincare and hair care products of all time. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, to keep this interesting, let's bounce back and forth between my favorites and least favorites. So we'll kind of go one for one. For all of my favorite products, we'll talk through ingredients that really stand out to me, formula, how I like to use that product. For least favorites, I'll just kind of highlight what it is about that product that I don't love. But for the sake of not repeating myself over and over and over, I will just say that CeraVe is known for having this set of ingredients, if you will, kind of like their standard superstar ingredients that they have in all of their products and there are three essential ceramides hyaluronic acid and cholesterol these are ingredients that are going to help to replenish renew and hydrate the skin they're amazing ingredients but i don't need to repeat that for every single product because they're in all of them so instead i'll just highlight if there are any other ingredients that i am really impressed by that will benefit the skin okay the first product that i have here is actually one of cerave's latest launches it is their acne control gel and there's a couple reasons why i really enjoy this but the number one reason is just because of the ingredients in this product and the fact that they're really difficult to find at the drugstore. So this has 2% salicylic acid plus two different forms of alpha hydroxy acids, which are glycolic and lactic acid. Those are the most potent or effective AHAs out there. So this product, having all three of those ingredients is so impressive to me. I can't think of another product that you could just easily pick up at Target or Walmart or CVS, like true drugstore that has those acids in it. I can't think of one. And aside from that just being a difficult combination of ingredients to find, I love it because one of the most raved about products with salicylic acid in it is the Paula's Choice BHA Liquid Exfoliant, and that has the same exact amount of salicylic acid as this. So I just love seeing something like this at the drugstore. This is going to be a great product for those of you that are looking for something to exfoliate the skin. If you have flakiness going on from dehydration, if you have clogged pores, if you're susceptible to blackheads and whiteheads, this is going to be a great product for you, or it can be used as a spot treatment as well if you are dealing with a couple of breakouts and you just want to target those and help them heal more quickly. A couple other ingredients that I'll quickly highlight aside from the acids are niacinamide, which is something that not only helps to calm and soothe the skin, but also help to control oil production. So if you do have really oily, acne prone skin, clogged pores, that is an extra goodie thrown in there for you. Plus this has phytosphingosine, which is an antibacterial ingredient making it even better for acne prone skin because of course, 
one of the reasons why we get a breakout is due to acne bacteria. So all around this has a great set of ingredients, but the second reason why I love this so much is because of the formula. It's just definitely something that is unique for an exfoliant. I feel like a lot of exfoliants have that very watery toner formula. There's nothing wrong with that, but I just like the fact that this is different and it's a gel. So it's very, very lightweight. It feels really nice and refreshing and hydrating on the skin. It's not sticky. It's not greasy. It dries down immediately. It doesn't look shiny or anything like that. It's just something a little bit different and I always enjoy applying it. So perfect product to wear underneath moisturizer. And as far as use goes for this, again, you can either use this all over the face for all over exfoliation or as a spot treatment. Right now in my skincare routine, I'm not using this all over my face. I'm using something else in my morning skincare routine that is not supposed to be mixed with strong acids. So that's why I'm not doing that then. And then at night I use tretinoin. So certainly not going to use this at the same time. But what I have been doing with this is using it as a spot treatment. I actually had a really big breakout last week and I used this for just a few days in a row and I felt like it healed so much more quickly than it normally does. So I would definitely recommend it for either of those purposes. Great product, easily within the top five. Okay, let's jump over to a product that unfortunately has made its way into my bottom five, and that is the AM Facial Moisturizing Lotion with Sunscreen. So this is a moisturizer that has broad spectrum SPF 30, and I just don't like this, never really have, don't think I ever will unless they reformulate it. It has great ingredients. I love the fact that it has SPF 30, I just don't like the formula at all. This is one of those products that I gave several chances because I wanted it to work so badly. At first, when you pump it out of this bottle, it seems like it's gonna be really nice, at least it did for me, but as you blend it into the skin, it just feels kind of gross. It's a little bit greasy. It definitely feels a little bit sticky. The blend kind of sucks for lack of a better word. It just doesn't blend and absorb into the skin nicely and seamlessly. Like the word that comes to mind for some reason is chunky, which is disgusting. It's not chunky, but like it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. So I'm really curious to know if any of you guys really love this. If you do, continue to use it, of course. I'm happy it works for you. But when I think about other sunscreens that I have and the formulas that I love, this is so nothing like any of those. So for that reason, bottom five. Okay, look at this. Little like chunks of product bunch up when you're blending it out. So maybe chunky isn't that crazy of a word for this. See? The second product in my top five will not come as a surprise to anyone that watches a lot of my videos because I have raved about this product so many times. It is their sealing, sealing ointment. Uh, no. Healing ointment that says it will protect and soothe dry, cracked, and chafed skin. If you're not familiar with this product, it's the same type of vibe as something like Aquaphor. I say that because I feel like almost everybody is familiar with what Aquaphor is, but this is better in my humble opinion. So it does have occlusive ingredients in it just like Aquaphor, things like petrolata, mineral oil, paraffin, dimethicone, all of those ingredients are occlusive ingredients that are going to kind of act as a protective seal on the skin to really lock in moisture. And that is beneficial if you have skin barrier damage, flakiness, because that's going to help to seal in that moisture so that your skin is able to heal as effectively as possible. But it doesn't just have that going on, which is like what Aquaphor is. It also has CeraVe's goodies in there. So the hyaluronic acid, ceramides, cholesterol to help the skin actually renew and heal more quickly. Plus it has panthenol, which is a great skin protectant and calming and soothing ingredient and vitamin E to condition the skin. So that's why I think this is better than Aquaphor. I also do prefer this formula as well. It's definitely an ointment. She is ointmenty. <laughs> but I really enjoy the way that it feels. It's very soft and every time I put it on I get excited because I know that magic is about to happen. So like I said, you can definitely use this on the skin anywhere on your face for barrier repair. I used to do that all the time last year and it definitely helped to heal my skin more quickly. How I have been using this now because I haven't been having, knock on wood, that wasn't even one. But thankfully this year I have not been having the same issues with skin barrier damage. So how I have been using this is as my nighttime eye cream. I want something thick and occlusive around my eyes to seal in that moisture and help to prevent the acceleration of fine lines. Obviously the skin around our eyes is thinner, it's very delicate, and it makes us very susceptible to fine lines in that area more so than other areas on the face. So to help with that, aside from a retinol eye cream, 
I seal everything in with this bad boy right here. Plus, I also really enjoy using this on the lips. It's great for that too. So another multi-use product here, skin healing, eye cream, lip conditioning. It is absolutely amazing and I could not live without this. I could not. Next, another product that I do not love is their eye repair cream. This one's tricky because once it's rubbed into the skin, I don't have an issue with it. I actually think it feels nice. It's not the thickest eye cream that I own. I do prefer something thicker around the eyes, but for a daytime eye cream, I actually think that it works out. My problem with this is just when you first squeeze it out of the tube, the formula reminds me of cottage cheese a little bit. Oh, that sounds so gross. It almost looks like it curdles or something. Do you guys see what I'm saying? I, I don't know. There's just something about that visually that I can't get behind. It just has freaked me out ever since I thought of that. So for that reason, I don't use this anymore. Yeah. Number three within my top five, which did I already say that these are in no particular order? I feel like these products are all too different to rank. So it's not like this is number three. It's just one of the five that I'm talking about third. Okay, not important. It's of course their PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion. So this is a fan favorite moisturizer for good reason. I think that this is the perfect moisturizer for oily skin. Number one, because it has niacinamide in it, which again is going to help with oil control, but it also just has the best formula for oily skin because it's so lightweight, gel-like, feels very nice and refreshing and hydrating, but it's not creamy or overly thick. It doesn't feel greasy or heavy on the skin at all. It's just one of those moisturizers that once you apply, it sinks in, it's gone, it hydrates, and it leaves you feeling moisturized all day, at least it does for me, but that's it. It's not going to make your skin look super, super shiny or dewy or glowy. None of those things that thicker moisturizing creams can sometimes do that I know those with oily skin want nothing to do with. I have to confess that I am not using this as much as I used to. I religiously used this for over a year. There are others that I just find myself reaching for more now. So I recently posted a video with my top five favorite moisturizers at the moment. And this actually didn't make the cut. This definitely would have been number six, but I just like those even better right now. I will say though that in the summertime, I reach for this all the time. It's just, it's so good. And drugstore, of course, what can't you love? Next up for least favorite products is their Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Serum. There's a couple reasons why I don't personally love this one. The first being that they don't disclose the amount of hyaluronic acid in this, which makes me think it's not very much. And that's not to say that more is always better with ingredients like this, that's definitely not true. But if I am using a hyaluronic acid serum that has, let's say, 5% or 10% hyaluronic acid, and I'm seeing really good results, it wouldn't make sense for me to step down from that for something that has less. But the other reason why I don't love this is because of the formula. It does feel really, really nice, but when I'm using a serum like this for hydration, I want it to be a liquidy, juicy, more watery serum, if that makes sense. It's just personal preference. And this one is not even something that I feel like is a true serum. It's like a moisturizer, but thinner. It's a little bit tricky for me to describe, but I would say that this feels much more like a lotion than it does an actual serum. So on the one hand, I think that this could be great if you have dry skin because it's also going to give you additional moisture on top of that hydration. But otherwise, if you are like me and do prefer what we typically think of for a serum, this will be a pass for you too. It's just, it's enough for me. Second to last of my top five favorite products is their Hydrating Cream to Foam Cleanser. This is a cleanser that's designed to cleanse and remove makeup. And that is the only cleanser that CeraVe has that is supposed to do that. I am patiently waiting for them to come out with some sort of cleansing balm or oil. I would love that, but this is such a great product nonetheless. So on top of their standard set of ingredients, there's also a lot of different forms of amino acids in this cleanser, replenishing, renewing ingredients that help to hydrate the skin. And while we're not going to see as much benefit from those ingredients as we would if they were in a leave-on product like a moisturizer, I still really enjoy the addition of those ingredients because this is something that just leaves my skin feeling new after I use it. I can't quite explain it, but there's so many cleansers that I've tried that after I use it, my skin feels a little bit tight, a little bit stripped. That never happens with this. It's like the opposite situation. I love it, which I already said. My favorite part about this cleanser is definitely the formula. It is very soft. It's kind of like this lotion-y 
formula, if that makes any sense at all, but in a good way. I love the way that it feels. It's creamy yet lightweight at the same time, and it does a really good job at removing lighter coverage, lighter weight makeup, so tinted sunscreens, a tinted moisturizer. That is what I will reach for this for, but if I am wearing foundation, powder, concealer, the whole nine yards, a little bit heavier duty, then I do feel I need something like an oil or balm to break that up. This isn't the absolute best for that, but just for everyday makeup, I think it's great. So I would definitely recommend this if you're looking for a two-in-one makeup remover and cleanser. Second to last in the bottom five is their Skin Renewing Vitamin C Serum. Couple reasons for this, number one being that it only has 10% ascorbic acid in it. That's a really good amount to start off with. If you've never used vitamin C before, you can see how your skin responds, hopefully have minimal irritation, but once your skin is able to tolerate that and you can use higher amounts, I definitely would recommend doing that, aiming for anywhere between 15 to 20% because that's going to give you better results than 10%. So for me, I have no use for this in my skincare routine. My personal favorite vitamin C serum is from Timeless that has 20% ascorbic acid. The second reason that I don't love this is similar to the hyaluronic acid serum where it's just a little bit thicker than I prefer in my routine. So this isn't quite as creamy as the hyaluronic acid serum. I definitely prefer this one. It's more of kind of like a gel hybrid almost. I think it feels really nice, but I still just prefer something that is more liquidy and watery than this. You know, it's totally up to personal preference. Again, if you have dry skin, you would probably love it, but if you have oily skin, you'll probably want something that is more of that true, really, really liquidy vitamin C serum. I shouldn't say true, because it's not like this isn't a real vitamin C serum, but what you would expect, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And last, but certainly not least, for my top picks is their Skin Renewing Night Cream, which I would say just right off the bat is something that feels elevated for the brand. When I think about a lot of the other products that they have, this is clearly a step up in more ways than one. So the first way is just the ingredients. This has so many great ingredients in it. Definitely more stacked than some of the other products that they have. So some of those great extra ingredients include things like shea butter, peptides, saccharide isomerate, olantoin, niacinamide, like there's just a little more going on here, but what is even more impressive to me is the formula. Oh my goodness. This is something that I would consider to be a dry skin dream because yes, it's thick and creamy. It's going to keep you moisturized all day or all night long, but in such a nice way. It just, it feels so good. It's incredibly soft. Oh my goodness. There's just something, like I said, special about this. It feels very conditioning on the skin. And if you have tried this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just not at all like my last least favorite product from them to segue, which is the moisturizing cream. Don't get me wrong, this is still a great product. It's definitely more budget friendly than this night cream. So if you are on a budget and you have really dry flaky skin, continue to reach for this moisturizing cream. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my favorite formula. If you have tried this night cream and also tried the moisturizing cream, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just not as nice. I don't enjoy reaching for that moisturizing cream. I actually used to use that a lot before I knew about the healing ointment for barrier repair and it works great for that but I've just never loved putting this all over my face. It's one of those products that almost kind of feels pasty to me. I don't know. I just can't get myself to reach for it anymore when I have so many other moisturizers that I genuinely love. It's like why am I going to try to force myself to use something that I don't have fun putting on my face, you know? And with that, we have made it to the end of this video. Let me know in the comments below, do we have any of the same top or bottom five products? Is there a product that I didn't mention that you think should be in the top five? or in the bottom five, let's chat in the comments below. As always, if you're interested in picking anything up after watching this video, all the products I mentioned are listed in my description box in order of mention and linked for you guys as well. And let me know in the comments also which brand or brands you would like me to continue this series with if you want me to keep doing it. You guys know the drill. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing all of those things. Your support means the world. Stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days, but until then, I hope you have a great few days.